Does listening to classical music or doing difficult puzzles make you smarter? Is it true we only use 10% of our brain? Those are actually two brain myths. My next guest hopes to set straight. It's Brain Awareness Week, and UC San Diego is announcing the start of a new website called brainfacts.org. Joining me is Professor Nick Spitzer, a neurobiologist and co-director of UC San Diego's Cavalli Institute for the Brain and Mind. Now, you are also editor-in-chief of this uh, new website, which officially launches um, in May, right? That's correct, Wayne, yes, and we're very excited about this. We think that this will be an authoritative, inviting source of, of information for the general public about all the aspects of the brain in which they're interested. Well, talk about some of... Uh, what you're going to offer on this website? Well, it has a topic-based architecture, which means uh, that when you go on the website, if you're a curious individual, if you're a K through 12 teacher or student, if you're a policy maker, if you're a patient or a patient advocate, you can go to the appropriate menu, pull down that menu, and right away get into uh, information that would be interesting and relevant for you. Uh, uh, and the, uh, there'll be lots of links that will allow you to uh, dig down to deeper and deeper levels of information uh, as your interest grows, we hope, and grows. Uh, and finally, at, at the bottom of these, uh, this hierarchical organization of knowledge will be uh, references to original literature, should individuals want to go and, and, and look at this. Wow, so you can follow up and, and dig deeper and deeper yes, yes. into brain matter. A absolutely, very nice. So yes, to speak. Yes. Now, now, when we sat down here, you said something to me about uh, people have persistent views, so this may be a bit of an uphill climb, right? Well, there are a number of misconceptions that people have about the brain, uh, and uh, these are, are popular myths. Uh, the, the idea that classical music makes you smarter, as, as you mentioned, uh, is, is one of these, the, the so-called Mozart effect. Uh, I wish it were true. Uh, I, <laughs> I play classical music for my children all the time, and, and they're smart, but I'm not sure there's a connection here. Uh, rigorous studies have indicated that this is the, actually not the case. Uh, another m myth is that alcohol uh, kills uh, the brain cells, that every time I drink a glass of red wine that I'm killing neurons in my brain. This also is not true. Uh, chronic drinking, heavy drinking, of course, yes, this will kill nerve cells, but uh, a, gr a glass of red wine with dinner can have very salutary effects. Now, you, you mentioned uh, some of those who might benefit from this site. So you see this as as something for the layman as well as the teacher? That's right, that's right. We really have these four different audiences. Uh, the. Uh, the lay person uh, and, and any interest that he or she has in understanding more about the brain, uh, patients and patient advocates, people who uh, have or individuals that they care about who have Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or some other uh, neurological disorder, uh, a whole range of people uh, who uh, really want to know more about the brain and uh, the uh, website is, is put on and backed by the Society for Neuroscience. Uh, this is a big society, 42,000 members, neuroscientists like me, uh, who are working actively in the field, contributing new research findings so that uh, the, the, the public can have then access to the new information as it becomes available. Mm -hmm. and, and how did you come up with this idea? Where, where did it come it from? It was a long time in gestation. Uh, uh, almost 10 years ago, one of the uh, society presidents, uh, uh, Huda Akil, very distinguished investigator, she is professor at the University of Michigan, on the back of a napkin at a dinner, she uh, wrote this out, and then, of course, years later, it's now come to fruition. We're very fortunate to have uh, funders, uh, content partners from the Kavli Foundation, the Gatsby Foundation. Uh, these uh, folks have stepped forward and provided the money to go ahead and launch the website. Uh, and so many thanks to them uh, for getting us started in this enterprise. Okay. And of course, this is Brain Awareness Week. Um, and, and, and there has uh, been quite a, an evolution as it relates to sciences and and neurology, right? Yes, uh, new yes. areas of study? L uh, many new areas of study. Uh, people understanding more about the uh, plasticity of the brain, the way the brain changes as we learn uh, and remember, or alternatively, as we forget. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, lots of interest in, in this. Uh, people are also now very actively studying consciousness. What does it mean to be conscious? Uh, uh, do other animals have consciousness? Is this, is this a general feature of the way the nervous system operates? Uh, uh, we're getting new insights into the origins of different uh, brain disorders, so there's a lot of really exponential growth in our knowledge about the brain. Professor Spitzer, this sounds uh, intriguing. Thank you for your time. Very happy to be here. And it's brainfacts.org, launches in May. That's right, and Twitter presence is already out there. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thanks very much.